So if you watched our uh, timeline chalkboard um, of this Ukrainian scandal, you saw several things that stuck out. Uh, you saw that a woman named Chalupa, her last name Chalupa, um, was probably the first person to say Russia's involved. Um, and she did this long before anybody else. She also was uh, working with the Ukrainian embassy to get dirt on Donald Trump. She was also working uh, with Michael Isikoff uh, from Yahoo News. And uh, she was also working at the same time that the Steele dossier was being compiled. Now, they just say she's a soccer mom. But we had somebody on last night that worked at the Ukrainian embassy who she introduced herself to, and then later the Ukrainian ambassador also said she is an operative for the DNC, and we have to work with her because after the election, they'll be very helpful uh, to us. We want to make sure that we have this as a strong relationship. The DNC, because they were helping Hillary Clinton. They thought Hillary Clinton would be, would be um, uh, uh, voted in, and it turned around. Now, there's also something else. There's also that story about Joe Biden uh, firing the really, really dirty prosecutor general. Well, there's a guy who plays a role in both of those. He was there, and he witnessed both of them. He's a Ukrainian. Uh, Andre, what's his last name, uh, Jason? Teloshenko. Teloshenko. Andre Teloshenko. I talked to him yesterday. Uh, he was over in Europe, and I talked to him for about 90 minutes just doing some basic questioning uh, about what do you know, what do we have right, what do we have wrong, where should we be looking, what, what happened with you. I want to show you uh, three, three clips here of, of Andre talking about how Shokin, the guy that uh, Joe Biden got fired, was not corrupt, according to him. Now, he worked for Shokin, but he left Shokin's employ in about, what, four months or five months in because he disagreed with his policies and what he wanted to focus on. But he, he didn't quit because of corruption or being dirty or anything else. So he says Shokin was not corrupt. The reason why he was fired is because the Soros NGO was protesting, and there was pressure from Soros to get Shokin removed. Listen to what he said. I want to make sure I understand this, because this is something that the American media will never cover, and that is, you say that it was from day one, the George Soros organization that, was, that wanted him out. Why would they want him out? Why would they want him out? That was the question we were asking them. We came out to the protesters. I was the one who actually coordinated the communication with the protesters on his behalf, on the prosecutor general's behalf, asking, look, guys, what happened? What is the story behind your protest? We're ready to cooperate. Let's go in. We'll show you what, what's needed. Let's get involved together. You are the NGOs. You're a member of organizations. Let's cooperate together and fight corruption. We, we invited them to the prosecutor's office, and they still, after that, even got worse and protesting all over Facebook, all over pr physical protests, every day by the prosecutor's office. And nobody knew at the time what was they were doing, what was their agenda. But their agenda was at the end, as we see today, is the Burisma investigation against uh, Burisma money laundering money and Hunter Biden being involved in it. That's the main thing we see today as their narrative, because at that time, we didn't understand what their narrative was. Okay, let me bring in uh, Jason Buttrill, who is our uh, chief researcher. He is a guy who was former military intelligence and has been tracking this story down. The significance of what he just said. That's amazing. Um, well, I mean, it completely dismantles a lot of what the Obama administration was saying about uh, Shokin. the entire thing with Shokin. Um, we, we found in our own research uh, that pretty much basically what he's saying as well. We found in our research that Shokin was kind of like confused. He was like, 
you did, and this was in a uh, European court, that he had said, you guys haven't brought any charges against me. Like, you didn't even give any examples of how I'm corrupt. Please tell me how I'm corrupt. And they never gave it. They were just like, sorry, you're gone. And so it was so. So it was it was the NGO on the ground, the Soros-sponsored NGO, that was saying that Shokin was corrupt. It's It's kind of like now where, you know, Donald Trump did something with Russia. What? What did he do? But they didn't even do an investigation. It was the it was the NGO that was on the ground with Soros money that were creating this image that he was corrupt. Once he was fired, he was fired and and our guest said pretty clearly uh, fired for Burisma, not for corruption, fired for Burisma. They never brought any charges. They never in, did any investigation whatsoever of Shokin. They they never did anything except cut him loose. How fascinating is this? Because we've talked about top-down, bottom-up strategies. This is top-down from the Obama administration going bottom-up, <laughs> right to the right to the source in the streets. Street protests. Like, that, 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 that was amazing right there where he just said, I don't think that's even been released, is they wanted to, this is the first time I think we're hearing this, they wanted to work, Shokin's office wanted to work with this NGO. I'm like, sure, this is Soros-funded, whatever. Look, let's help each other out here. Let's both fight corruption is what he was saying. That right. was their offer. But they, but uh, the NGO doubled down and instead of working with them, s- took to the streets and started protesting. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so the other thing, it was very, very clear and, um, and almost sad when you looked at it from the Ukrainian point of view, which he did. He's a Ukrainian. Uh, he lived here in the United States for a while. So he you know, understands the United States, understands how things work here, but is Ukrainian. And he talked about how he just, you know, his country didn't want to be ruled by the Soviet Union and it didn't want to be ruled by the United States. It wants its own independence. And the United States came in and said, you're going to play ball our way. And he said they dictated everything that we did. And he talked about how there was this meeting that is in our timeline that Barack Obama set up at the White House. And he asked the, you know, the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, they call it uh, NABU, um, but it was something that the White House dictated, you have to set this bureau up. And it's an anti-corruption bureau. What you find out later in the timeline is that the head of the anti-corruption bureau goes to court and and is convicted of interfering in our election. So it was, again, something that the White House dictated to them. This is what you're going to prosecute. This is what you're not going to prosecute. We told you that he brought in, Obama brought in all of these prosecutors, and it wasn't for what they thought. Well, this is the guy who set that meeting up with the White House. And listen to what he says about that meeting. Were you present or involved in in that meeting being set up, and were you there when when it happened? Um, yes, I was. I was uh, asked to help organize uh, that meeting also because it was part of my duties at the embassy, and it was as we being involved in the prosecutor's office in Ukraine before the ambassador asked me to involved in that meeting. But the interesting thing is it was I was involved in two meetings out of a week long of meetings with the NABU, the, the Corruption Bureau of Ukraine and the uh, uh, Frame the Corruption Bureau of Ukraine and then I was blocked from attending any other meeting, which was basically a shock for the embassy and this never happened before. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Actually happened. I didn't. I didn't understand. I, I didn't. I didn't hear what you said. It was a shock. You were also involved in what? I was. I wasn't. I was in that meeting. I was. I was helped to organize that meeting. But then, after because they were not only this meeting in the White House, they had numerous meetings within the FBI and DOJ. Right. They're talking about corruption as they stopped in Ukraine. But I was blocked. The Ukrainian embassy in Washington was blocked from attending any of those other meetings after the first meeting with the White House. So the, what he said here, in case you didn't follow it, is he was the guy that the Obama administration reached out to the embassy and said, hey, we want to have an anti-corruption meeting with the DOJ. 
We'll have it at the White House, and then we'll have some more additional meetings uh, with the DOJ later in the day, and it'll go for a week. And so this is common. They do these kinds of things all the time. So they brought everybody in, but what was not common was he is the official representative of the embassy. Um, the ambassador is the is the person that is representing the president of Ukraine and the country. And they always attend these meetings. That is the political arm to make sure that everything is on the up and up. Well, he was invited to, and so was the ambassador, to the White House meeting. But when it came to the DOJ, without any discussion at all, they banned all people from the embassy from going in. And the reason why this is important is because this is where, when they came out, people told him, we were told to basically spy on Donald Trump. Significance of this audio. This, this, this is amazing to me because... This meeting, as described in, in, in work from like people like John Solomon, was originally supposed to be like, hey, let's just get together, shake hands, and you know, w- learn about how we can work with one another. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was what the Ukrainians thought when they walked in. They were looking for a partnership. But what they found out later, after, during these two secret meetings, allegedly, was that it had nothing at all to do with uh, working with each other. They wanted this to be secret. They wanted this part to be clandestine. And this had everything to do with trying to influence the 2016 election. 